Jnanakosha Vedas Samavedam by pact Jnanakosha a Sastrapedia of Vedic knowledge Upanishads Samaveda based Upanishads Om Ganana Antwa Ganavadigam Havamehe Kavin Kavina Mopotra Vastamam Jetara Jem Brahmanan Brahmanat Patanat Runman Nati Vipida Sadhanam Maha Upanishad Chapter 5 Then I shall speak truly of the seven steps of ignorance, seven of wisdom, the stages between are countless and produced otherwise. Liberation is existence in natural condition. Lapse from it is the concept of I. Attributes like desire and hate, born of ignorance, are not for those who do not swear from their nature as a result of the realization of pure consciousness. The fall from spiritual nature, the drowning of consciousness, in mental matters, there is no other delusion now or in future than this. The existence in spiritual nature is said to be the destruction of mental activity, being in the middle when the mind goes from object to object. The existence supreme in nature is remaining like stone, all ideation dying out, free from waking and sleep. That is one own nature which is not inert, the non-pulsating mind when the ego aspect is, is dead. Waking in seed state, simple, waking, great waking, etc. The sevenfold delusion when the these combine among themselves, they become manifold, here of its nature. The first stage is the consciousness and desirable, pure condition taking the name of mind jiva which will come into existence. Waking existence as seed is said to be waking in seed. This is the new or first condition of consciousness. The waking state after the new age, the subtle concept one, mind arising purely, this is waking not existent earlier. The great waking, the broad grass concept arising in a previous birth as I and mind. The waking dream, the kingdom of the mind which has developed or not as identifying oneself with these. The dream state, it is of many kinds arising from the waking state in the form of two moons, shell silver, mirage, the reflection by the awakened person. This was seen only a short time, it will not arise because of not seeing for long. It is like the working state. The dream waking state, the inert condition of jiva, giving up the sick conditions. The deep sleep is filled with the future misery, in which condition the world is merged in darkness. The seven stages have been spoken by me of ignorance. Each of these has hundreds of varieties with various splendors. By knowing the seven stages of knowledge, one will not be submerged in the mire of illusions. Many schools speak variously of the stages of yoga, but only the following are acceptable to me. Liberation follows after the seven stages. The first stage of knowledge is auspicious desire. The second is reflection. The third is thinning of the mind. The fourth is attainment of sattva, then detachment. The sixth is reflection on objects. And the seventh is of the Turiya. Their explanation, the wise say that the auspicious desire is a desire following detachment, meditation. Why do I remain like a fool being looked upon by good people? Reflection is good activity. After the practice of detachment and contact with scriptures and good people, thinning of the mind is the condition where the attachment to sense objects is reduced by means of auspicious desire and reflection. Sattva 
Pati is the mind in the pure sattva condition by the practice of the above three stages. The asma sati stage is the developed condition without even a trace of involvement by means of the practice of the four stages. Vadhabhram Bhavana is the sixth stage resulting from the five stages, delighting in the spirit formally by the non-contemplation of objects internal and external. The fourth transcendental condition, here the seventh is concentration on one's nature, seeing no real difference by the long practice of six stages. This is the stage of Jiva Mukti. The stage beyond the fourth is the stage of liberation without the body. Nidagha, those who have reached the seventh stage, delight in the spirit. They do not drown in pleasure and pain. They do whatever is only relevant and minimal. They perform actions following the path, awakened by those nearby, like one waking from sleep. The seven stages can be known only by the enlightened reaching which condition even animals, barbarians are liberated with or without the body surely. Wisdom indeed is the breaking of the knot and the liberation, the dying of the illusion of mirage. But those who have crossed the ocean of illusion, they have reached the high position. The means of calming the mind is said to be yoga. This is to be known as having seven stages which lead to the status of Brahman. There there is no feeling of you and I, one's own and other, not the perception of existence or non-existence. All is calm, needing no support, existing in the ether of the heart, eternal, auspicious, devoid of ailment and illusion, name and cause, neither existent nor existent, nor in between, nor the negation of all, beyond the grasp of mind and word, fuller than the fullest, more joyful than joy. Beyond perception, the limit of one's hope, extensive, there is no existence of anything other than pure cognition. The body exists only when there is the relationship of the perceiver, the perceived and the vision connecting them, whereas this position of liberation is devoid of such relation of this distinct perceiver, perception and object. In between the moment of the mind from object to object, there is the unqualified essence of intelligence. This is immaterial perception, reflection, always identify yourself with that. Your eternal essence, devoid of states like wakefulness, dream and deep sleep, or equalities like intelligence and inertness, Always identify yourself with that. Excluding the heart of stone, inertness, always identify yourself with that which is beyond the mind. Discarding the mind in the far distance, you are that which is be established as that. First the mind was formed from the principle of Supreme Self. By the mind has this world with its multitudinous details beyond spread out. Wise men, the nihil alluringly named, shines forth from the nihil as the blue does from the earth. When the mind is dissolved through the attenuation of mental constructions, the mist of cosmic fancies will stand dissolved. The one infinite, unborn, pristine and pure spirit shines forth within as the cloudless sky in autumn. In the sky has sprung up a picture without a painter or a basis. It has no perceiver, one's own experience without the medium of sleep or dream. In the conscious self that is the witness, common, transparent and indisputable, as a mirror are reflected all the worlds without willing of any kind. For curing the mind of its fickleness, deliberately reflect that the one Brahman is the sky of the spirit, the imperatite self of the cosmos. As an immense rock covered with main lines and sublines, learn to regard the one Brahman with the three worlds superposed on it. Now it has been known that this problem, world is not produced as there is no second entity to serve as a cause. 
this alluring may be looked upon as a marvel long agitated as i have been now i am at rest there is nothing other than pure spirit laying aside all doubts discarding all sense of wonder behold repudiating all mental constructions the principle of mindlessness may be seen to be the highest status having liquidated their sins have attained infinitude those sages whose intellects are great and tranquil and who who have risen above the mind one who has reasoned out the nature of things according to the vedanta the modifications of those whose mind objectively induced have ceased who has given up all reasoning objects who has dismissed the objective realm empty of values but has seized on what alone has eternal value has a mind that conforms to the eternal reality when the net of deep seated impressions of empirical life is filled it as a fowl is net by a rat when due to dispassion's power the knots of the heart are loosened once nature as brahman becomes crystal clear owing to the experiential knowledge of brahman even as muddy water treated with the kataka powder now one experiences the eternal witness no longer one beholds the inert while living one is awakened to the supreme truth that alone is to be realized one is totally oblivious of the ways of the world shrouded in the thick gloom of delusion and due to an eminent degree of mature dispassion one ceases to have any relish for even the so called delectables that are in fact dry and tasteless like a bird from its cage from delusion flies forth the mind devoid of attachment frailties dualities and props the mind filled with truth shines like the full moon vanquishing all meanness born of perplexities and dismissing all dilemmas due to idle curiosities neither i nor art else exist here i am but brahman that is peace thus perceives he who beholds the link between the existent and the non existent as a mind indifferently contacts objects of the sense so of sight when encountered by chance so does the man of steadfast intellect regard action in this daily life experience lived through knowledgeably alone proves satisfactory the thief recognized and befriended is no longer a thief but runs out to be a friend as an unplanned journey to a village when accomplished is treated elation by the travelers so is the splendor of enjoyment that may fall to their lot deemed by those who know even a little diversion of the well controlled mind is reckoned quite ample no elaboration of it is sought as such is a source of affliction a king liberated from detention is glad to eat a morsel one un- unattacked and undetained hardly cares for his kingdom locking one arm in the other setting one row of teeth on the other and putting some limbs against others conquer the mind from this sea of empirical life there is no way out except victory over the mind in this vast empire of hell hard to subdue our ones and adversaries the sense organs who ride on the unruly elephants the sins and are armed with the long arrows of cravings in the case of one whose egoistic vigor has been attenuated and who has vanquished his foes the sense organs latent impressions intent on enjoyments whereof as lotuses do in winter like no eternal spirits latent impressions cut capers only as long as the mind remains unvanquished for lack of intense cultivation of the non dual truth of the men of discrimination the mind i deem is a servant as it accomplishes what is sought a minister as it proves the cause of all gains and a loyal chieftain as regulates the assailing sense organs 
the mind of the wise i deem is a loving spouse as it pleases a protective parent as it guards and a friend as it marshals the best the paternal mind well studied with the eye of the shastras and realized in one's own reason abolishes itself in yielding supreme perfection extremely perverse and inveterate well awakened and controlled and purged the delightful mind gem shines empowered by its own virtues o brahman to win perfection be luminous after washing clean in the waters of discrimination the mind gem steeped in the mire of many flaws by wholly overcoming the inimical senses resorting to sovereign discrimination and beholding the truth with the intellect cross the sea of empirical existence the wise know that concerns as such is the abode of endless pain they also know that unconcern is the home of joys both here and hereafter bound by the cords of latent impressions this world revolves constituting empirical life in manifestation they agonize when uh, obliterated they make for well being though intellectual though extremely and variously learned though high born and eminent one is bound by cravings as a lion is with a chain resorting to supreme personal endeavor and perseverance and confronting to sastric conduct unwearingly who may not win perfection i am this entire cosmos i am the supreme self that lapses not nothing other than me is this vision is the supreme assertion of the self as i are the first level of self assertion i transcendent all i am subtler than a hair tip such o brahman is the second and beneficent mode of self assertion this promotes liberation and not bondage the case of the liberated in self the conviction that i am no more than a bundle of parts like hands feet etc is the third mode of self assertion it is empirical and petty this root of the evil tree of empirical life is wicked and must be renounced smitten by this the worthy man rapidly falls ever lower discarding this wicked mode of self assertion from one's life in due course by virtue of the beneficent mode one achieves liberation in peace resorting to the first two non worldly modes of self assertion the third worldly mode that occasions pain must be renounced next discarding even the first two one becomes free from all modes of self assertion and thus ascends to the transcendent status of freedom bondage is nothing but craving for objective enjoyment its renunciation is said to be liberation mind's affirmation is privileges its negation is good great good fortune the mind of the knower tends to negation the mind of the ignorant is the chain of bondage the timeless mind of the knower is either blissful nor blissless neither fickle nor tireless it neither is nor is not not does it occupy a mind position among all these so maintain the wise just as due to subtly ether illuminated by the spirit is not objectively perceived so the imperatite spirit through do all perceiving is not observed the imperishable spirit free from all imaginings and beyond non uh, creature nomenclature has been assigned desig- designations like one self 